Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Tonight, I want to talk about something that we hear from the anti-gunners, especially anti-gun politicians, all the time. It's when they're making their pitch for their unconstitutional gun laws, they say, well, the majority of the people want this. 65% of the people want that. 70% of the people want that. 80% of the people want that. You know, 90% of the people want stronger gun laws regarding ARs and assault weapons. You know, they'll always pull out the most people want or the majority wants. As if that's the number one thing to sell something with. Even if it's unconstitutional, as long as the majority of people want it, then it's what you should do. Because that's what politicians are supposed to do, right? Serve the po people. Well, first off, that's not the only thing politicians are supposed to do. Their first uh, loyalty is supposed to be to the Constitution. That's their first loyalty. Their second loyalty is to the people. Remember, when you elect someone to represent you in Congress, as many of our founding fathers put forward in their opinions and on paper, etc., when you elect someone, you don't only elect that man, you also elect his good judgment. You don't just elect a megaphone, you elect a reasonable person who you think will represent what's best for your area, your district, your state, whatever. That's what you do when you elect someone. They're not just a megaphone for what the majority of people want. Now, I know a lot of people will say, well, it's not even true that the majority of people want these things. And that's true sometimes. Sometimes questions are just very carefully worded to make it sound like if you said no, you'd be some kind of monster. Like, ah, don't you think that there should be less children being shot by ARs in schools? Well, of course there should be less children. So there, uh, that means you want more gun control. You know, they can get very crafty in the way they word things and very uh, manipulative. But there are a lot of things I do 100% agree that probably the majority of Americans are against the gun culture on. Uh, and that's mainly, it's our fault. Because look at who we had representing us for years, the NRA. They weren't really good at getting points across. They weren't even trying to sell the proper points half the time. They were trying to sell what's profitable. I mean, 60, 70% of people, I guarantee you, if you say NRA around them, even if they're gun people, they go, Bleh. So it's not real hard to believe that the NRA failed us in our messaging. Uh, also on the internet, we have a lot of, you know, we have the Igloo boys and all those people uh, who seem like they're itching for violence. So that turns a lot of people off. So I don't find it hard to believe that, you know, probably the majority of Americans, and I've said this many times, it's, it's what I see when I go outside my own little walls here. The majority of Americans do think, well, people probably don't need 60 rounds in a magazine and people probably don't need a weapon of war because they believe these things that they're told by the politicians. But even though they're being misled, that still does mean they believe that there should be some restrictions on these things. And like I say, I blame us for that, for choosing who would, could put our message forward and for letting certain people be the loudest voices in the gun community even. You know, the propagandists, the fear mongers, everybody else like that, the profiteers. They don't exactly sell a good message or get a point across in a way that appeals to reasonable people. So like I say, we bear the burden for that. But like I was saying, just because the majority of people want it, that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. If that's the only argument they have, then they don't have much of an argument. Because you know what the majority of people wanted in the 50s? They wanted interracial marriage to be illegal. You know what the majority of people wanted in the 60s and 70s? They wanted segregation. You know what the majority of people wanted in the 70s and 80s? They wanted being gay to be illegal. They wanted sodomy laws. Do you know what people wanted in the 2000s? They wanted get marriage to be between a man and a woman, most people did. But those things didn't jive with the Constitution. Those and a lot of other things. They didn't want women to have rights at one point in time. At one point in time, the majority of people, even women, didn't want women to vote and have rights. Doesn't mean it was right and that it followed the Constitution or that it should have ever been that way. Slavery was never right, no matter how many people agreed with it. Just like gun laws that go against the Constitution and infringe on the rights of the people are never right, no matter how many people you can dupe into thinking they are. 
if that's your argument, oh, this poll we took says that, you know, 80% of the people who actually read that liberal newspaper and actually voted in that poll believe we should have an AR ban or assault weapons ban, assault weapons ban. Even if those numbers were truly representative of the people, that doesn't make it right. So if that's your only argument, you have no argument. If you can't point to things your law will actually literally do, prove that they'll literally do that, prove how it's best for the people, and prove how it's constitutional, then it shouldn't be passed, not even if 99% of the people agree with it. If tomorrow we held a referendum and everyone voted and 92% of people said that everyone who's not has, wasn't born here needs to be deported right now, that wouldn't make it right. And it would make it against our constitution regarding immigration, etc. It would violate our just laws. It would be immoral, everything. But majority of people voted for it. So if you're using that argument, you're using a very weak argument, especially to sell us on unconstitutional stuff. And these politicians who try to hide behind, well, it's the will of the people. Well, you know, your first uh, loyalty is supposed to be, like I said, to the Constitution, to our republic, to our democracy. And yes, a republic, a representative democracy uh, is a democracy. A republic is a democracy. People always want to argue that. It's not a democracy, it's a republic. Look, take a civics class and learn the types of democracies. There's direct democracies. There's republics. There's representative democracies. There's constitutional republics. There's all kinds of types of democracies. But I'm getting off topic on here, but that's just kind of head off the morons that want to come in here later. Go, we're not a democracy. Uh, but uh, like I was saying, their number one loyalty is supposed to be the Constitution. When the people say, we want this, even if it's not, even if it's something uh, uh, that they want strongly, 90% of them, you still don't give it to them if it's wrong. Like if you represent a county in New Jersey that says, hey, we want to bring, bring back slavery, but we want to be able to enslave Filipino people. You don't go to Washington and propose it because you're serving the Constitution and our union. That's your main job. You're not supposed to be a megaphone for the, the ignorant majority. That's why we have the system we have, so we don't have mob rule. We were set up, the Founding Fathers set it up so that we didn't have uh, the rule of a simple majority. Just think how many uh, times in the past, if that was the case, that the simple majority could rule, we'd still be living under some of the most arcane, religious, moral garbage laws that ever existed. So I'm sick of hearing that it's what the majority of people want. Unless you can say it's constitutional, it's effective, it's justifiable, and all these other things too, then you shouldn't be proposing it no matter how many people want it because quite often people don't know what they want and sometimes what they think they want is the worst thing for them. All right, everybody, with that being said, I want to move on tonight and answer a viewer email. Now, this email is gun-related. They asked me, is it best to have just one gun that you carry? You know, like they say, fear the man who has just one gun because he probably knows how to use it. Uh, that old saying, I more like say, uh, pity the man who has just one gun because he's probably a broke fuck. You know, that whole notion that having one gun makes you the best you can be, you know, that's like saying, well, you only have one car, so you're probably a NASCAR driver because you're just awesome with that one car. Mm, doesn't really, that logic doesn't hold through on most things. It really comes down to how much you practice and how much well you learn the basics, to be honest. But like I said, they want to know, is it better to have just one gun or is it better to have a carry rotation? You know, multiple guns that you choose from, like a set of guns that you carry on a regular basis. Well, I personally like a carry rotation. I have a carry rotation. My carry rotation consists of pretty much three guns. Usually a snub nose revolver, quite often my uh, Kiapa Rhino because it is very uh, friendly recoil wise and I can practice with it a lot. Then I have something that has uh, more capacity. And that's usually my Beretta 92, my Langdon Tactical Beretta 92, the Elite LTT, that I carry for when I need more capacity. And my Smith & Wesson 329 44 Magnum for when I need something with more power. And as you can see where, when I'm saying different situations for different guns, the fact is no one gun is perfect for everything. You're not going to find a gun that does everything well. 
It's just like when you buy a car. If you want a car that's good on the track, well, then it's probably just going to be okay on the road. If you want a car that's great on the road, it's probably not going to be that awesome on the track. You know, if it's great on a drag race, probably not that good on curved roads. You know, there's just never the one thing that covers every circumstance. And it's the same thing with guns. Uh, when I'm around the house here, I'll usually carry just my little snub nose 357 Magnum. I've got my Chiappa Rhino on my hip right now as I'm filming this video. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not likely to run into any large groups of people. I uh, don't leave my property. I live out pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And all things I have to worry more about, uh, getting a little too close to a bear or a cougar needs something to scare them away or possibly defend my life in a very rare situation a cougar got a little too friendly or something. But my 357 Magnum six shot is awesome for that. It's perfect for carrying around the house. It's lightweight, it absorbs recoil. I can practice with it a lot because it does absorb recoil. It's just a great everyday all around carry gun. But if I'm going down to Portland, and let's say I know there's going to be a protest that day or something, and I might find myself in my car swarmed by 50 people with clubs and bricks that are threatening my safety. Well, I want something with a little more capacity. I want my Beretta. So that gun is better for that situation. And if I'm going out into the backwoods, like say I'm going to Alaska or I'm going even further north of here, where there might be some larger predators roaming around, I want my 44 Magnum, my six shots of 44 Magnum. That gun's way better for that situation. I'd rather go up against, you know, a moose, an angry moose with maybe with a club or a switchblade. Uh, not me, the moose having the club or the switchblade. Uh, I'd rather have my 44 Magnum. I don't know if my nine millimeter would be very effective, even though it has more rounds. And it's better for large groups of people. It's not uh, good for angry people. My, you know, moderately armed mooses or meeses, whatever you call them. Meese, I guess. Uh, so different guns are better in different situations. You're never going to find one that's best for every situation. So kind of whittle your life down into a few categories. Like I'm either in one of these three categories, usually in during my day. Uh, you know, some days I'm doing this, some days I'm doing this, some days I'm doing that, and decide which gun is best for those categories and keep those guns in your rotation, practice with those guns, be familiar with those guns. It's always nice if you keep it to where they're all hammer fired and they are all just double action, single action, I just pull the trigger, I don't have to take safeties off, there's not different manual arms on them. That's always a plus, but it doesn't have to be the case. I'm just saying that's a plus. Uh, but like I said, I think you should have a rotation of guns because no gun is best for every situation and you should have a gun that is best for whatever situations you might find yourself in. All right, everybody, I want to end the show tonight by reading the names of the three people that were chosen during last night's live chat to receive one of the FUD Free Zone aluminum signs. Uh, these were the three people that were drawn from the people who donated to our ongoing fundraiser over on tympistolproject.com. If you want to donate, go on over there. The details are on the site. And in a nutshell, it's just for every $5 you donate, you get an entry for that day. And that day we draw three different people from those entries to receive one of the FUD Free Zone signs, courtesy of Aries Graphics. These are really high quality items here as far as signs go. Way better than the ones I get off the internet, I'll tell you that. Uh, these are like actual uh, street signs you would see out in the wild. Like if you see, you know, if you knock on a, a stop sign that's good solid aluminum, these are like that. So uh, I want to read the names of the three people that were chosen last night. Uh, the names were Karen Woodson, a regular donator to all the causes. Uh, Bryant Automotive LLC, was the name, who was in, which is the name I see all the time. Also, and I'm assuming that's a person behind that. That's their account, I'm assuming. And the third person was Robert Trambley. Trambley? That's a name I'm not real familiar with, but they probably have a screen name that I'm not, that doesn't have anything to do with their name. Uh, so those are the three people who uh, received a sign last night. If you want to be in the running to receive one of the signs tonight, and this is the only way to get these signs, they're not for sale anywhere. Uh, I just don't sell stuff because I'd rather it be as a, you know, a raffle for some, doing something good. Uh, so if you want to be in the drawing for tonight and you want to come into the live chat, which will be at 5 p.m. Pacific time today because I'm the opening act for Never Enough Ammo. Uh, if you want to be in the drawing up until 5 p.m. today, you have to donate. 
uh, to the calls over on tympistolproject.com. And I'll put a link in the corner up here so you can go over there and donate if you want. Uh, up until 5 p.m. today, you can donate if you want to be in tonight's drawing. Uh, from 5 p.m. today till 5 p.m. tomorrow will be tomorrow night's drawing. So go on over and donate if you want to be in the running. If you want to be in the running for tonight, like I say, you only have an hour after this video goes live to donate. So it's at, if it's after 5 p.m. Pacific time, you'll be in tomorrow's drawing. So you'll have to come to live chat tomorrow. And God, I would never suggest you come to two live chats. That'd be too much of me for most people to take. Although there are hundreds of people that show up every night, the same people. Uh, at least there's at least 150, 200 people that are the, always the same core 200 people there. Some people just love punishment. Or they just, you know, they find me as something easy to go to sleep to or something. I don't know what the case is. Uh, but uh, like I said, if you want to go over and donate, please do. It's going to a good cause. It's helping Kira, who is the uh, fur baby of one of our own, uh, Corey Long, here in the gun community. We're keeping our charity local this time. Needs surgery. It's going to cost about $3,000. So go over there. Donate to Kira's surgery fund. Get yourself a chance to win one of the signs. And uh, I wish everybody luck, even though everybody can't win. Uh, but I know most people just want to donate because it's a good cause. They don't care if they win the sign, but winning the sign is a nice bonus. It's just something I feel I can do for people who do something good. So like I said, go over, donate, be in the running to win one, and then watch for the live chats to see if your name is one of the ones chosen. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just want to sign off as usual by saying, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, you know, it is what it is. It could be a lot worse, trust me. It has been worse in the past, but it could still be better. And if we as a community start ignoring the fear mongers, the profiteers, the fake advocates, the people who claim to be fighting for our rights when all they're really doing is serving their own pocketbook and the industry that feeds them, if we start ignoring those people and fighting hard and smart for the Second Amendment, what things will be for people who love the Second Amendment and love freedom in general in the very near future is better.